Um, so this talk is called Unified Widget Theory, Building for Desktop and Mobile. We're going to take kind of a look at where the jQuery UI and jQuery mobile teams are trying to unify some APIs and make things easier and more cross-framework, I guess. And we're also going to be able to build our own in the end. Um, I'm Corey, like Adam said. Uh, I work at a company called HealthX, and I wrote a book about Node called Node.js Recipes. Um, that's the end of my plug. So what are we going to cover in this talk? Uh, first, we're going to talk about why unification is important. Uh, so we're going to take an exa kind of an example of what not to do and how we can avoid those pitfalls, which is going to lead us into talking about the widget factory, uh, which will allow us to build a unified widget at, at some point in the future, right? And then we're going to discuss how jQuery Mobile's widgets have evolved, uh, I guess, and how now, with, even with jQuery Mobile 1.4, the UI tabs uh, API and widget is now part of mobile. And then we're going to build our own. So first, why is this important? Um, I think most important for me as a developer is I don't want to repeat myself. I don't want to have two separate widget bases that are going to diverge. And that's also going to make it a better experience for my users because they're going to have a same, the same user experience across frameworks. So here's this hypothetical scenario um, that you may see where you're building a desktop app and a mobile app. Maybe it's a legacy desktop app, and you want to modernize it with mobile. You've decided to use the jQuery frameworks, so jQuery UI and jQuery mobile. But you want to avoid writing two widgets, but a lot of times people will write two separate widgets for this uh, that will share a same, similar functionality, and it will diverge over time. So what's that look like? So you've got a widget built for desktop and mobile, and it works great in both places, but you've, you've separated it. So then you make a change to one, uh, and you say, well, let's just add this feature later into mobile. And you've already diverged. It makes people very angry. And so it just becomes a maintenance nightmare. It's what you want to avoid. So we're going to talk about how we don't use two separate widgets. We'll use one, and it'll be a unified experience. So because jQuery Mobile and jQuery UI use the widget factory, that allows us to make a single widget um, that avoids those common pitfalls. So the widget factory, some of you might be thinking, um, this is the platform originally created for jQuery UI that allows you to write a very extensible widget. Uh, it's um, self-contained, and you can use it anywhere within the framework. And jQuery Mobile is built upon that as well. Um, so you can see here the UI dialog and the mobile pop-up. And there's a bunch of other things in there, but that's just the, the top part of them. <clears throat> so let's talk about the anatomy of a widget. So if you're going to build a unified widget, you need to know what it's made up of. It consists of a name, a base, and a prototype. So the name is just exactly that. It's the namespace you're going to give your widget. It can be anything from, like we saw, UI, dialogue, mobile pop-up, CG, cheese, whatever, uh, anything you want to name it. Uh, the base, this is optional. This is where you're going to inherit the base of your widget. By default, it's this jQuery uh, dot widget with a capital W, uh, which is the main widget base for both jQuery UI and jQuery mobile. And so it's optional. It'll inherit that automatically. But you could also extend another widget. Uh, for example, here I've got the UI progress bar being extended. The prototype is where all of your methods and properties and options will lie within your widget. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can also override existing uh, prototypes. So if you're inheriting from a, a different base, all of the methods that you would put in there that, are, that, are, that you want to override can be easily overridden. Uh, so here's an example of a very basic widget. Um, so what's this have? It inherits from the main base, because I have not inherited from another base. And then it's got a method called do something, which it just 
uh, manipulates the CSS for the element. Uh, one important thing I think to note is in the widget factory, uh, this is going to target the instance of your widget. Uh, so you can easily target those. And that's what helps make writing widgets um, easy, I think. So if, if I want to use it, I just put, I find my element. In this case, it was some hidden class. I initialize it, and then I call my method uh, do something, and it would change the font family to consolus. Um, so let's talk about how you can take some existing code and turn it into a widget. So my friend Ann built this code pen, which is adds some visual feedback to the jQuery mobile slider. Uh, so when you're towards the zero inside of your slider, it's reddish, and once you get to 100%, it's greenish. But when it was written, it's bound to p the page init method, and then you're finding your element and the specific piece of your element that you want to do, and you're changing the color with this get the color function, which takes the percentage that you've progressed across, and then it manipulates the RGB values to change uh, the color. So I thought this was really nice, and I decided I wanted to turn it into a widget. So it's really simple to take code that you have like this and turn it into a widget that you could be, that you can reuse. So I extend the mobile slider uh, as my base, and I call it my slider, and then I've moved the get the color function inside of the widget, and then I'm overriding the mobile slider's refresh function here. There's other uh, code in there, but I'm highlighting the portion that I change where you're taking the percentage that you've moved across and then calling the get the color function. Um, so that turns your, um, the, the colorful slider that we had is now a widget so you can just easily reuse it elsewhere in your, in your application. So that's very important, and I think if you're building plugins, you should use widgets. Um, if you're using jQuery UI and jQuery mobile, it's just a very concise and clear way to make new functionality throughout your app. <clears throat> so jQuery mobile started off using the widget factory, and so there were early unification experiments um, in one of the early alphas there was this jQuery UI date picker widget that was thrown in. So you can see that it's now touch friendly and it matches the early uh, jQuery mobile uh, look and feel. So the setup for something like this is pretty straightforward. You, add, you need a date input, and that's gonna be your target. And then you're gonna have a date picker mobile CSS. So that's gonna have some styles that are in addition to the normal date picker that make it touch friendly. Um, then you need the jQuery UI date picker because you need the actual API for that. Um, and then we've got a custom mobile JS. This is just gonna add those custom CSS classes to make it touch friendly. Then the next thing you have to do, uh, in this situation at least, is you have to bind to the mobile init method. Uh, the mobile init method here, uh, we're going to degrade the inputs that are date, so it's going to take them all back to regular, uh, regular input types so that we're not going to have the native date picker from your device pop up. It's going to be the jQuery UI date picker. And then, uh, as I mentioned a couple slides ago, you have this date picker mobile JS, uh, and here you see we're extending the date picker plugin, and adding this update date picker call, uh, which moves all that extra CSS that you need into your widget so that it can be touch friendly. You'll also see here, date picker isn't using the widget factory. I believe it's the only UI widget that doesn't use the widget factory that yet, but I believe there's a rewrite in the works. But, so you don't have to use the widget factory, but you, you know, as I said, it's probably the best way to go. If you've been looking at any of the jQuery mobile 1.4 docs, uh, there's an unofficial date picker, which is kind of an extension of this previous experiment. Um, Alex Schmitz has his mobile date picker wrapper on GitHub. So you see it has custom CSS as well as uh, this date picker JS, which basically can do what those earlier experiments did uh, in less work. So that's a good step forward for 
pulling in a UI widget into a mobile environment. <clears throat> so let's take another look at how we could do that. Uh, let's take the UI progress bar and we're going to make it colorful like we did the slider and then we're going to add it to our jQuery mobile app and have it in jQuery UI. Uh, so I'm extending the progress bar just like I did the slider. I'm adding the get the color function. I'm overriding this ref refresh value function where I need to find the percentage and then change the color based on that percentage. So it's the same story as we had with the slider. Uh, and now let's take a look at what we do. We just initialize it in UI, right? Um, the same way you would with the regular progress bar, except the value as well. And you can do the same thing in the jQuery mobile app. Uh, so we've got a CSS file in here. This progress bar.css is going to add uh, just a little bit of a tweak to make, uh, to make the progress bar from UI look decent on mobile. And then we need to include our UI progress bar so that we have the API that we need. And then my progress bar, which was the override to make it colorful. And you can initialize it just like you do in jQuery UI, or uh, you can make it fit in with the rest of your markup for of jQuery mobile. And if you, have, you want to assign a data role progress bar and data value, it's going to initialize it uh, just like you would expect, I guess, with a value of 73 as a progress bar. So now we've got a unified experience. But that's maybe not where the end result, want, where we want to be at the end, because there's still a lot of work and extra files to pull over. So before we get to that, we're going to talk a little bit about how jQuery Mobile has evolved. And we're going to look at this example. So jQuery Mobile 1.3 and before utilized this mobile base widget. And now you see jQuery Mobile 1.4 doesn't include that. And that's part of the story to how um, you can build a more unified widget, because there's no visual deterrent saying, this is only for mobile or this is only for UI. Um, so how does this happen? The, before jQuery Mobile 1.4, the mobile widget looked something like this. So it has these methods in here, enhance and enhance within. Those are methods that help the lifecycle of a jQuery mobile page become touch optimized. Um, and those were inside of this base widget. And so they were carried along with all of the other widgets. Uh, now, the mobile widget here is just for backwards compatibility. You see, we're not even using the widget factory. We're just using jQuery extend. And then we're extending the base prototype so that we don't have to have a custom jQuery mobile widget base. So again, this is highlighting that, that change. Uh, you see that we're no longer using the widget, and we're using the extend method. So as I mentioned earlier, jQuery 1.4 has the UI tabs interface part, as part of the mobile framework. Um, this was one of the first passes that I could find on GitHub of adding that UI tabs. And you can see here this is before the mobile widget base disappeared. And so they're taking the tabs prototype, taking the mobile base, and calling it mobile tabs. Uh, there's also this initialization selector, which looks for the data role tabs. And that's going to start it off. Um, so that's a pretty simple way to, to have a UI experience in mobile. But with jQuery Mobile 1.4, it gets even better. This is that, that widget is absolutely empty. So that's great. You see that uh, it's defined to have the UI tabs. And that's, that's all you need, other than some, some custom styling, maybe, to, to make it look good on mobile. So how is it that simple? How is it completely blank? Um, this goes back to the auto initialization that used to be with those enhance and enhance within methods that were in uh, the widget base for mobile. In this page JS now in the mobile framework, we're grabbing the widget name and the constructor, and we're looking to see uh, if the widget has an initialization selector. If it has one, we're going to use it. So if you want something named other than its name as your initializer, you can use that. But if not, it's going to default to 
the name of the widget, and then if the data role equals that, it's going to automatically add that to this collection of widgets. And then in a mobile helpers file, it's going to go through each of those widgets, and then it's going to initialize them. Um, so that makes it easier to move on to the next step, where we're going to build uh, something similar to the UI tabs into jQuery mobile and have it unified. So we're going to do that with this progress bar that we just had, but we also had to include a CSS file, the UI uh, API, and our second, secondary customized file. So to do this, we're going to do it in four steps. We're going to add the progress bar, <coughs> excuse me, API, and we're going to add CSS to make it touch friendly. We're going to add our custom JS file and then make a build. So when you add the progress bar, I just threw it in there right next door to the UI tabs that was already in jQuery Mobile 1.4. And then I've got my custom progress bar, which comes in here. And you can see that I'm requiring uh, the UI progress bar be there so that I can then extend it as my base and then my override values, which we saw earlier. So I'm going to have a colorful progress bar. <clears throat> then we need to add it to jQuery mobile itself so that when I run grunt, it's going to say, I need this to be part of jQuery mobile. And I do that. And now I can use it just like I would uh, as, as I did when it was separate files. Now it's just part of my custom jQuery mobile build. So what does that look like? It looks like a colorful progress bar that's in jQuery mobile. And you don't have to do anything else but include your custom jQuery mobile build. So that's all good, right? You're thinking, that's nice. But I really don't want to build jQuery UI or jQuery mobile every time I make a change. Um, I want to just have my widget that I can use in both jQuery UI and in jQuery mobile. Um, so let's, let's look at how we can do that. What does it take? Uh, it would take some cross-device CSS, probably. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it, if you want it to look nice on mobile, you probably want it to, to have some clever CSS. You also want um, simple markup. Like when you're building a jQuery mobile app, there's a lot of simple mo mo markup that's going to make it easy to, to write your app. And then we've got a single widget that we can just add to both our UI target and our mobile target, and we've got a unified experience. There's no extra inheritance, uh, no need to add uh, custom JS files on, and CSS files and pull over a U, uh, like a UI API and no extra builds. So here's, here's an example. We're going to do like a little contact card um, that's going to work on both UI and mobile-based apps. Um, first is going to be some CSS. Uh, I'm, I'm not a professional designer, uh, but this is what you might ma ma make your CSS look like. I use the same sort of paradigm as uh, jQuery UI and jQuery mobile, where it's UI dot. Um, and then we're going to build our widget. So here I'm calling it a mobile card. I could have called it Corey's card. I could have called it the card. Uh, but this is going to give it the name of card. Uh, so our options that we include are going to, these are the default options that are always included in this widget. Uh, these are special selectors that are going to pull out certain parts of our widget and do something extra with them. So I'm using these selectors for icon, name, phone, and then of course the init selector of card. Now, we talked earlier about jQuery mobile's new way of doing things, and I don't absolutely have to have this card selector for an init selector in mobile. So because I named it card, this can be omitted. Then I have a few methods here. I've got create and refresh, so, and they're both going to call my set the markup, which is going to manipulate my, my widget to look as I want. Um, so create is the initial creation. And then my refresh is going to be, if I dynamically build this, I want to be able to call this function and do it again and build it. <clears throat> so inside of this function, I'm going to gather all the pieces 
And these are based off of those options, the selectors that were in the default options. You're going to find my name, my phone, all of these interesting pieces that I want to build in my widget. And you can see here I'm already adding a class to the phone number. Uh, and then the rest of that method, you get your card marked up, and you're adding a name. And then I'm grabbing an icon, which is a, uh, thrown in there and put in at the top of the card. So then what do we do to include it? We just add it to our, our page. Uh, so after you've included either jQuery Mobile or jQuery UI, you add your contact card, JS widget, and now you have a unified widget across devices. So what does the markup look like? Uh, I tended to lean towards a more jQuery Mobile style for my markup. Uh, so I use data roles heavily. So I've got a card, I'm pulling out a name and an icon and the phone number. This could fit pretty easily if you're using handlebars as a template engine. Uh, you could grab all of your contacts and put them through this and, uh, and then you've got your mark up there. So it looks, after it's all rendered, it looks like a basic contact card. Uh, you could go into it and wrap all of your phone numbers in a and an anchor that are going to dial the telephone number um, if you want, and add all sorts of methods. Um, but now you're thinking, wait, in your options, you use these jQuery mobile data selectors, which are exclusive to jQuery mobile. And that's true, I did. And there's several ways you could get around this, um, two of which probably aren't the most recommended. Um, first, you could override the sizzle selector engine in your UI-based uh, app or your desktop app and make that selector available to you. So you could use the JQM data selector on the desktop. You could also pull out the JQM data only from the download builder on jQuery Mobile, but you probably don't want to have to mess with that. The, maybe the best solution is to just use selectors that you know you can use. Uh, so I'm going to just select the data role and I'm going to get rid of the, the mobile only data selectors. So this is going to make it, when you're building a unified widget, you want to make sure that it's not going to have any extra maintenance nightmare that you don't want to have in, in both frameworks. So there's not an auto in it in uh, jQuery UI, so you can either call it by the class name or by your data selector. Um, and then you initialize your card by calling it. And it shows up on desktop as well, uh, you know, maybe a little wider, maybe some other styling that's even classier. So in summary, uh, UI widgets are now already available on, in the jQuery mobile framework, and there's more coming. So tabs is there in jQuery mobile 1.4. Uh, next, if, according to the roadmap, at least, we've got menu, autocomplete, uh, the date picker is going to come officially. Uh, spinner, those widgets are all going to come from jQuery UI to jQuery mobile. And I think there's going to be even, even further progress on this where if you're using the widget factory, the only underlying difference from the API is the CSS. So if you have a mobile friendly CSS and a UI friendly CSS, you can share the same widgets. Um, but that you don't have to rely on the UI widgets to come in to mobile to make something unified. Because we saw we could use uh, custom including files uh, from various places. Uh, you can also build a custom build if you would like. And then we had these uh, standalone type widgets uh, that you can use and build an experience across devices. So that's the end of my talk. Uh, I, there's probably some time for questions if you have any. Uh, here's some information about me. Thank you. Woo.